Welcome to the fourth video in the Computer Vision Crash Course series. In the last three videos, we looked at how we can work with images in Python using NumPy and what the different dimensions mean and how we can manipulate the images. We also looked at how we can use Pillow to visualize the images in Google Colab. In the second video, we set up the Google Colab environment so that we can version control our notebooks. And we also showed how to upload custom files to the notebook environment so that we can load them in Python. In the first, third video, we explored the data set. So we loaded the digit recognition data set from scikit-learn. And uh, we explored the different images in the data set and uh, the ground truth labels so that we understand how the images are represented and how the data set that we're training on is actually built up. And training is what we do in this fourth video. Here we're going to train a support vector classifier from the scikit-learn library. And we're going to evaluate it to see how good it actually is. And in the fifth video, we're going to use the model that we train in this video to make predictions on our own images that we upload. So let's get started. In the last video, we created um, a folder in our um, GitHub repository containing the Digit Classification SQLearn notebook. And this is where we loaded the data sets. So let's open this again in, in uh, Google Colab. And since we have had the runtime um, shut down, we need to um, restart the runtime and run all cells again. And that was really fast. So now we have the data set loaded. So the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to write a um, comment in a text section. This is the, this is our two things that we are going to do. We're going to split our data set and we're going to train an SVM classifier. And actually we're also going to evaluate the classifier. And um, the first thing to do is to do a training data split. And the reason for this is that um, the number of features that we input to our uh, network is very large. We have images that are eight by eight um, pixels, which we can see if we write the shape of the images, we can see that they're eight by eight pixels and we have 1,797 images. And each of these pixel values, um, if they are an um, unsigned integer, 8-bit integer, they can keep 256 different values. That is um, 0 to 255. And we have 64 of them, which means that each, um, each single input to the network can have this many different combinations, um, which means that if we have a model that is powerful enough, it will be able to memorize all the different images, um, not based on how they, what they look like, but only based on their unique composition, which means that we can quite easily achieve 100% accuracy on the data set we train on. But of course, we won't get that 100% accuracy when the model sees new data because this memorization technique where the model just remembers the labels for each combination of inputs will not hold um, on the new data that the model hasn't seen. So to simulate this and be able to get accurate um, estimations of the model accuracy, we are going to split the data set in two different parts. 
uh, we're going to have one training data set for training the model, and we're going to have one um, testing data set for uh, testing the model once we're done training it. And in many cases, you want more different splits than this, but for this exercise, this is enough. Um, so we could easily do this uh, by just doing slices using NumPy uh, and slice the image array um, in the same way as the labels array. Um, but since this is such a common task to do in machine learning, and given that the scikit is a machine learning library, there is already a function in scikit for doing this kind of split. So we're going to import from sklearn.model selection. And we're importing train test splits. And this function uh, will return the training images, the testing images, the training labels, and the testing labels. Uh, and first off, it wants um, a data set. Um, so we could input data.images um, here. But actually, um, there is one preprocess step that we are going to do to the data set first, um, to just have to do it once before the split. Um, and this is that the images right now are um, 8 by 8 pixels. And the support um, machine classifier does not have a concept of spatial resolution. So it's, it's, it's expecting a flat uh, array with all the features. So we're going to transform this 8 by 8 um, two-dimensional array to a one-dimensional 64 um, pixel long um, array. And we're doing this with the reshape operator. So actually, we can show up here. So this um, reshape method um, expects the um, output resolution or the output um, dimension of the array that we want. So the first dimension, the number of images, that should be the same. We shouldn't um, change that. So let's leave that as length of data dot images. So it's untouched. The second one should be 64, which is 8 by 8. But instead of hard coding 64, we can input negative 1, which means that it will take um, all the um, the, the rest of the dimensions uh, that are needed to get the same number of pixels. So this will give us the same number of images, but each image is now a 64 pixel long um, array. So let's copy this and um, make it our flat data set. And this flat data set is what we're going to split into train and test um, data. And we also need to split the labels in the same way. And we do that by inputting a data dot. And next thing we're going to specify is train size. So how much of the data should be in the training data sets and how much should be in the test data sets. And we're going to specify 0 0.8, which means 80% of the data should be in the training data sets. We can now do xtrain.shape and see that we have 1437 images in the training data now, and they are 64 um, pixel uh, long. And we have the x test, which is just 360 images. So the next thing we might want to verify is that the, um, the target labels are actually split in the same way as the images. Um, so to do that, we want to, we want to visualize um, one of the images. So just as before, we do uh, image from array. And we have xtrain. And let's take the first one in the xtrain. And uh, just as before, we know that this has a maximum value of 16, while our 
um, the Taylor library expects 255 as maximum value. So we're going to um, divide by 16 and multiply by 255. And this is also a floating point 64 um, variable. And the image library expects them to be unassigned integer eights. We're going to convert that and specify um, the data type or the, the mode, uh, which is uh, grayscale eight bits. And another thing that we need to do here is that we flatten out this array. So this is now um, 64 long. And if we want to visualize it as an image, it needs to be a 2D array. So we reshape it back again to eight by eight. And now we can see that we have um, our dig digit here. So let's resize it to 100 by 100 so we see it a bit clearer. So that's number two. So let's also print the um, Y train for the same index. And we see that it's supposed to be number two and it does look like number two. So it looks like the split has been correct. Um, so let's also verify it with another index, um, index 100, for example. Should be a nine, looks like a nine. So that uh, seems correct. And we do the same for the test uh, data set. Should be a seven, looks like a seven. Um, so I would say that it's uh, correct in the split. So now when we trust the data set, um, we should actually train a model. So we're going to use a support vector classifier from scikit-learn. which is a um, type of support vector machine. So we instantiate the support vector classifier and we should give it a gamma parameter. For now, let's set this to 0 0.001. Um, so this is what we call a hyperparameter. It's something that the model training will not optimize, but we need to specify it when we create a model. And uh, often it, uh, you need to try out different values to get the model to converge or to get the model to get good results. Uh, and this is called hyperparameter tuning. And you can also automate that search. Um, in this case, we're not going to talk more about that. We just leave it as uh, this for now. If you want to know more about this support vector classifier, you can also um, always search for a scalar and support vector machine and you will get to the documentation, which specify um, quite nicely um, what it is and how it works. Um, for now, we're just going to create a model and we're going to call model.fit. So in sklearn, fit is typical the uh, method you call to actually train the model. And we're going to train it on uh, x train, uh, the images and y train the labels or the target. If we execute this, now we have actually trained a model. Um, so next thing we can do uh, model dot predict. Uh, so this is how we do the inference, how we predict um, a value from the um, from an image. So let's use x train. Um, and we want to just call it with one image here. If we do this, we will get an exception because it expects a list of uh, images to predict. Um, so we could do it by doing zero to one. So this will um, return a list with just one image, which is index zero. So we see that it predicts it to be um, number two. So let's then check in uh, y train for zero and see if it actually is a two or not. Yes, it is a two. So in this case, it was correct. So let's try it with uh, a few more. Uh, let's try it with the 10 first, zero to um, 10. 
and let's also print the labels for these. We have 279060 all of them are correct. So that looks good, but that is on the training data set, which the model is trained on. So let's now do the same for the test data set. And write the labels for these. We have 26865748281. All of them are correct also, and that's nice. Um, so based on this, it looks like the model is very good. But of course, we want a more uh, elaborate evaluation of our model. Um, if we should be able to compare them, it's not enough to just take some random samples and uh, look at them manually. Um, so we could, um, of course, write our own um, code for doing the evaluation. But scikit-learn also contains code for this. So what we're going to do is that we're going to predict um, all the all the um, um, labels for the full test data set. We input the full test data set. And then we're going to import sklearn um, from sklearn we're going to import metrics. And since we're doing classification, we're going to use the classification report. This one expects the um, true test labels and the predicted test labels. Here we get an elaborate evaluation of our model. So we can see a few different um, accuracy measures here, um, or correction measures. So first of all, we got the precision. This basically tells us um, when we do um, get the classification results, how accurate is this classification result? How likely is it to be um, correct? We also got recall, which basically says if we have a label, um, how likely is it that we will detect it as that label? And we get the F1 score, uh, which is basically an average of these two, um, or an harmonic mean to be more specific. And then we got the number of samples in it, in the, this class. So on class zero, we can see that we have 100% on both precision and recall, and therefore also on F1 score. And it's based on 40 samples. We can see on uh, the class, uh, the digit five, for example, it's uh, not 100%. Um, so we will um, look more into that later. And we can also see the total aggregated um, accuracy. So in this case, we get 99% accuracy. So another way to visualize this a bit more um, uh, user-friendly way of looking at it, is to make a confusion matrix. We're going to use the confusion matrix display and from predictions. And just as before, we have the true labels and we have the predicted labels. And this will print um, a nice confusion matrix. So what we see here is uh, the true um, label of the digit or the image and the predicted label. So just as before, we can see that all the, um, all the labels um, for the images of zeros are actually correctly predicted as zeros. But if we look at this one, for example, um, the images with a five on it, in 34 cases, they are predicted correctly as five, but in one case, they are predicted as number nine instead. So we can see that the model has confused the five with a nine in this case. And here, another case where it confuses the eight with a nine. 
And I think both of these two are quite reasonable mistakes considering the low resolution of the images. A 9, a 5, and an 8 are quite similar in the shape. But we see another error here between... Uh, yeah, okay, so it's the same error here. Um, so all of these errors are quite reasonable to make. Uh, and I would say this is really good accuracy considering the kind of images that we have. So we have looked at um, how we do this split between training data and testing data um, to be able to accurately estimate the accuracy on unseen data, which is on what we will use the model on later. We also saw how we actually train the model, um, how we can set the hyperparameters, how we train the model, and how we predict with a model. And we have seen how we can evaluate the model to see how good it is. And this is, of course, important both to know, um, to know your model, how much you can trust it, but also if you train multiple models or try multiple hyperparameters, you need to be able to compare them in an uh, um, educated way. So in the next video, we will look at how we can actually make predictions on our own images using this model. So before that, uh, I'm just going to um, save the model to my uh, GitHub um, to my GitHub uh, account, and I'm going to um, change the commit message and write added training and evaluation of the Git certification. So that was um, this part. See you in the next video.